Well, welcome. I'm Wendy Rose Williams, and Greg Kirk and I are so happy to welcome you to the Waking Up Spiritually podcast. And we have a wonderful topic today that Greg's going to introduce in a moment. But first, I'd like to share with you, I'm a past life energy healer, and I help people release pain, anxiety, depression, things that just don't serve you anymore. And you can visit me at my website at wendyrosewilliams.com and request your complimentary 15-minute phone appointment there. So I'll turn it over to Greg to introduce himself as well as today's topic. And again, welcome. And I just want to say a quick uh, happy birthday to Wendy today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, yes, I'm Greg Kirk. Uh, you can come look at the things that I do at gregkirk.com. That's spelled G-R-E-G-G-K-I-R-K.com. I do energy work, uh, Reiki style things, uh, remote energy healing sessions, in-person sessions with tuning forks and so forth. Um, I'd say more importantly, recently I, I run uh, the Sunday online group healing circles uh, remotely through Zoom. And um, the, the basis of that is, is the basis of our, um, it's some information we've been getting in the past, uh, gosh, now five months. Um, of, you know, so we hold these healing circles. They start off as a meditation circle. Uh, I, I'm leading it. And um, sometimes inf information comes in and sometimes I, I joke, we have some <laughs> guest stars, guest appearances of, you know, beings come in and, and give us some information. I, I'm careful, I, I'm not a trans medium. I'm, I'm not a channeler in the traditional sense where I don't let a being come into my energy or anything like that, but I, I, I am picking up um, information externally, which is, is, uh, it's always interesting because it's, it's stuff that, um, mainly stuff that I, I would never think of. It's sometimes words are used that I am not totally familiar with, um, concepts that I'm clearly not familiar with a lot of times. So that's, that's always a good sign when, um, these things come through. I know it's not coming from me. What's even more interesting is some people in the group, this happens quite a bit where People in the, our group are also part of other groups. So they'll say things like, Greg, everything that came through to, in today's session, I was a part of another group like two hours ago, and it was the almost identical information. <laughs> like, like, okay, I guess this information is so making the rounds. Right. Just, right. just bringing that information through as many communication vehicles, channels, whatever, healers, yes. whatever term you want to use. Or even people who uh, just attended church sermons. So it is a Sunday. So some people are going to these early morning church sermons and then coming in to our, our session saying, Greg, this is so weird. Like everything you're talking about today is what my, you know, my priest or rabbi or, you know, whatever minister was talking about. So anyway, interesting. That's, that's pretty interesting. So um Without further ado, this is uh, steady information we've been getting over the past five weeks. I said five months, but five weeks. Um, it was right around the time we did a um, the topic of what's your role in a chaotic world. Wendy and I did that topic. I don't remember how many months ago it was, but we were getting some pretty good information at that time because, hey, you know, there's things going on. COVID, new wars, uh, Supreme Court verdicts, uh, shootings, you know, all these things that if you're really plugged into the daily news, you're going to be triggered, you're going to be more than likely upset. And then, you know, if you're trying to also have a meditation practice, and you're trying to maintain your energy uh, to be in a soft place, it's, it's, that's a tough to reconcile that. So we asked the guides at that point, you know, what do we do? What should we do in these in this situation. So the first part of the information will be a slight review of that. But um, ever since then, we've been getting the steady information of not just what do you do in a chaotic world, but what do you do now? You know, what is, what, what do you, what's the recommendation now? And once the guides realized that we were interested in that, and as a group, we were interested in that, and we were interested in helping the earth and helping humanity, we got this kind of slogan from the guides of you are being stewards of the earth and helpers of humanity. We we're like, okay. And I, I joked to somebody in the group, I said, we should make a patch <laughs> and wear it like we're in the club of, you know, stewards of the earth, helpers of humanity. I thought that sounded really cool. Um, and Absolutely. Ever, ever since we kind of signed up for that, we we're like, yes, that's what's what we want. 
uh, we've been getting this steady stream of information that it, it gets stronger and bigger. And it's um, it's gotten to the point now where I, I feel compelled to open, a, open the information up outside our group to as many people as possible because it's not only is it important information, it's timely. So this is what we should all be thinking about now, according to these guides who you know we have we have a fair amount of trust in. Um, some you know some of it will be information like you've heard in other famous, well-known, wise gurus speak. But there's there's a different spin on it because of the timeliness of it now. So anyway, without further ado, let me get this rolling. Um, <clears throat> In our and just to let everyone know, you may be listening to us as a podcast app, and that's wonderful. We do also have the programs as uh, PowerPoint, so that's what Greg was just starting. So there's also a, a video component, um, visual component to this podcast. You can find the archives at wakingupspiritually.com or on our YouTube channel. Yes, yeah, click on the broadcast link on wakingupspiritually.com. And just do a search for us. Um, it, it, do a search for us on YouTube, waking up spiritually, uh, and then the topic. That's usually what. So this topic today is the revolution of love. Okay. So uh, just a real quick thing. I, I just I don't really talk about this much, but I'm a musician. I've written a bunch of songs, and five years ago, almost you know to the day, this this song came in as I would say. A, channeled information. And um, it's kind of crazy. So this, I'm going to read quickly, you know, through the lyrics and, and you'll see it's, it's high level, great, beautiful stuff. The, the music is hard rock. <laughs> so it's, it's a strange juxtaposition of, you know, this really energetic music. Um, it's upbeat music. So it's not, you know, it's not bad or downcast or you know depressing it's it's upbeat but it's energetic but it's got this message of love in it it's the, the song is called quantum love so this came to me uh in 2017 around this time of year um it came through and i i wrote the song and we recorded it and, and everything was great and i it's one of my favorite songs that i've ever written you know i haven't really paid a lot of mind to it since then um but since this new information has been coming through it lines up so much with this. It's I, I have to I have to mention it. So if you're interested in hearing the song, I have a website called it, the the name of the music project is called the Zen Engines Z E N Engines, and you can go to thezenengines.com and click the music link, and you'll you'll look for Quantum Love. It's it's in a release that I did called Break Open. Anyway, so the name of the song is Quantum Love, and here are the lyrics: How many lifetimes has it taken for all of us to reawaken? It's seeming that we're dreaming, but we finally got the feeling. How many lifetimes has it taken? Now is the time of our demanding. Peace, harmony, and understanding. Seeing is believing, but our minds are now receiving. Now is the time of our demanding. And then it goes into a chorus. If you take some time for the blowing of your mind and throwing out the rules you don't obey, it's in your heart the perfect place to start for growing all the love you want to save. Growing all the love you want to save, growing all the love to give away, 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 right now, today. So that is the actions that it, I'm, I'm going to kind of give away part of the ending here. There's, there's a procedure that the guides have recommended that we do. One of the things is to build up this love in your, your heart. And you feel like you're saving it for yourself, but you ultimately give it away. So anyway, that that's... That stunned me when I had that realization. I'm like, I wrote this song five years ago. This is the process that we're being given today. It's just so amazing. So before I move on, Wendy, do you, do you have anything to add I to just this? Love, I just love when the ribbon pulls through like that. It's like the dots start connecting and we just, we just see the relationship and see the beautiful plan that we couldn't know or appreciate. But I think you're talking, Greg, about a great example of going with the flow and yep. just riding the wave and it just keeps on building and the vibration and frequency keep keep rising. So yeah, that's all, exactly. I, all I'd like to add. Thank you. So, you know, back to this idea of, it seems like we're in a chaotic time right now. So what do we do? Um, just, you know, one thing is, you know, I'll reiterate what the, the bit of advice that Winnie and I gave is, 
is you know you have a choice in your focus um as as esther hicks would say from abraham hicks uh, videos that she does you 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 have free will so you can focus on negative events you can focus on positive events that's your free will that's your choice there's an even balance of them it, even though it seems like uh if you watch the news there's an overabundance of negative things happening in the world for every war that's going on, there's something completely the opposite of that happening elsewhere in the world. There's an even balance. So you have a choice to what you want to focus on. And if the thing you're focusing on makes you feel bad, maybe don't focus on it, you know? And, and you know, naysayers will say, well, you know, you're burying your head in the sand. Shouldn't we all be concerned about, you know, some of these things that are happening? And again, it's your choice. You can. But I, the question is, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> if all you're doing is watching these things on TV and then you're stewing about it at home and making yourself feel bad, maybe even impacting your health, you might want to think about not doing that. Now, if you're one of these people who flies to U Ukraine to help with the refugee situation or something like that, or then yeah, great, go ahead and do that. But um, sitting around and, and just inundating yourself with this the latest news um, is, we all know it, it's not helpful. So maybe don't do that. Put your ideas, put your point of focus on something that is healthier, that you want, that makes you feel good. That's really just, you know, Joseph Campbell said, follow your bliss, just follow your bliss. What makes you happy? So it, uh, and just ask yourself some questions. Is it your responsibility? to focus on and become stressed out or depressed or enraged about world events? Do you feel irresponsible if you ignore them? Well, it's again, how much impact are you personally gonna have on these world events? And if you feel like it's not gonna be very much, then maybe you do something else, do something positive, um, but don't keep inundating yourself with this. And then finally, how can you make things better? Um, is it your role to fix the planet? Do you have a responsibility to maintain your, your own healthy energy? How does that affect others? And then finally, what happens when we all raise our vibrations together? So just, you know, it all comes back to this. If you, if you tend to your own garden, <laughs> your own energy garden, and make an abundant garden and, and make it healthy and happy, you're going to, that energy and that frequency is going to start affecting others in a positive way. You don't really have to do a whole lot for that to happen. So if you do that and then other people feel good and, and then, then a chain reaction starts happening, and lo and behold, we don't have to go out and do these dramatic things that we thought we would have to do to help right the world's wrongs, you know? So anyway, Wendy, I, I, I wanna stop there and um, I, know you, I know you've got some great things yes. to add to this. What, what this brings to mind for me, Greg, is that our thoughts create our reality more powerfully than ever before. Uh, I really loved when we did our 10 favorite book uh, recap and highly recommend Frequency, uh, The Power of Personal Vibration by Penny Pierce, because this is just bringing that to mind again. And just like we, our bodies, our, our temples really are the nutrition that we consume and, and the good water that we drink and the number of steps we take in a day and our movement, it's, it's the same thing is very much true with what we're feeding into our energy, I think is um, what you're saying in many ways and just having that be as positive and grounded as possible. So it's not that we're putting our head in the sand, but we're choosing what we what we consume um, from from our media and from the energy that we take in, I think that's that's critical, and I yeah. think that's um, really well said. How you how you laid this out? Thank you. And and it was funny because one time during one of our meditations, you know, we we literally asked the guys because some people wanted to hear this. They're they're like, well, what is it irresponsible for us to ignore these things? And you know, is there anything else we can do physically? And the guides came back with a very blunt response. It was, tend to your own garden. <laughs> you That's know. a great way to put it. It really, it really is. Yeah. So. Stay in your own lane. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, again, this is riffing on the idea of, you know, if you're getting upset or, or you know, unfortunately, a lot of these uh, world events 
translate into a lot of discussions on social media and then people get pissed off at each other because everybody has strong beliefs one way or the other and there's a lot of divisive talk happening right now a lot of divisions in the world about political parties and you know things like that so just realize this there there is a uh, a philosopher uh, i believe a greek philosopher who his name uh, it's a tongue twister epic epictetus epictetus who said he was a stoic who, who said any person capable of angering you becomes your master and i i agree with that i agree with that i i am not a fan of the stoics in particular but it's interesting I, I agree with a lot of the Stoics' ideas. So the Stoics were believed that all emotional response was ne- was bad. So your idea is, was to negate any emotional response, almost become robot-like, you know. But I think that's a bit extreme. I think if you pull it back and you um, maintain your emotions and you don't let your emotions get out of control, that's a good idea. So so anyway, so here's a bit about Epictetus. He he. Uh, To Epictetus, all external events are beyond our control. So we should accept whatever happens calmly and dispassionately. However, individuals are responsible for their own actions, which they can examine and control through rigorous self-discipline, which is almost exactly the information we got from the guides. So basically, the guides said to us, world events are going to happen. You're going to have very little impact on them. What do you have control over? Your response to them your emotions, your, your actions that come out of that. So using your own self-discipline, tend to your garden. <laughs> so. Well, I think emotions are critical. I believe to experience emotions is one of the main reasons that our souls choose to incarnate. Right. Because we just don't experience emotions the same way when we're home and don't have a body and everything is divine love, and everything is no judgment, and we don't want or need anything, that's a whole different, that's a whole different game. It is. And I, I so agree that if someone can make you angry, uh, you are giving away your power, because anger is a low vibration energy. And it doesn't mean that we want to stuff it because if you're feeling angry, you do need to find a way to express that in a healthy, safe way because it's a secondary emotion. And usually what's underneath anger is sadness and heartbreak. And because we're so resistant to feeling that because we think we'll get swept away by it, it's easier to knee jerk into anger because anger can feel very powerful. So learning how to be fully in our power without abusing it, that was one of my key soul contracts that I had with the uh, soulmate that woke me up is just so, so important. Right, 100%. So let's move now into some of the channeled information that we got um, about how to comport yourself, you know, how to uh, act towards others instead of being angry with them or letting them anger you and, you know, all that stuff that Epictetus talked about. What do the guides say? And the guides said said some pretty basic things that we've heard before. One, they they basically said the the golden rule plus the four agreements are, that's a good basis of, of how to kind of go through your life. So the golden rule of do unto others as you would have them do unto you I've got a graphic here that shows the golden rule. They, they're they talking about, there's a different phrase in the Bible, also in the Torah and the Quran of love your neighbor as yourself. It's not exactly the do unto others thing, but it's the same idea. It's just treat <laughs> your neighbor like yourself, you know? And um, in moving into the four agreements, be impeccable with your words. Um, don't take things personally. Don't assume and just always do your best. So just basically telling you to be a, a nice human being is, is really what this boils down to. And so you are born with free will. Just try not to give it away. You can do all of these things um, as, as long as you're um, not impinging on somebody else's free will. 
Wendy, I know you're a fan of the four agreements. So yes, any? I'm just trying to remember the author. I was looking at my bookcase, but it's a little too far to run over and grab it. Is it Don Miguel Ruiz? Does that sound right? I'm trying to remember the author. You're right. Yeah. So yes, yes. and it's it's a series of, of four books, and they're just they're very they're very quick reads, but just very very powerful. Right. Yes. So. Um, this one was just came up last Sunday. Very, very cool. I didn't know who the quote came from, so I did some research and found out it came from Ramana Mahar Maharshi. But um, it kept coming through in, in during the session of there are no others, because you know, we were at, saying things, of, what about other people, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, uh, Ramana Maharshi, uh, he was born in India. And uh, in the late 1800s and um, in the early 20th century, it, like when he was 16 years old, he um, he had what some people call a walk in experience. So he he was kind of just going along his, his merry way. And then this other positive, high vibrating entity went into his consciousness for, I think, the rest of his life. And he said it was like a, a, a death, like his other his other consciousness kind of went away and then he took on, he's, then he said he knew the, the mind of Shiva, the mind of God. And um, so all these, well, he, he developed a, um, a following, all these people, devotees, uh, he lived on a mountaintop, I believe it is his life. It, we used to have all these um, cartoons and so forth in the seventies of, you know, somebody going to a mountaintop and going to the, you know, the, the guru on the mountaintop and asking questions because people literally did that with him so that people would travel for miles and go to the mountain where he was and ask him questions. And uh, uh, one of his uh, books came out of uh, all these questions and answers. So, you know, one of the questions that somebody asked him is, how are we supposed to treat others? And his response is, is mind blowing. There are no others. <laughs> That is profound. You have to take a breath and think about that because yeah. it's it is a great way of saying that we we are all one. I yeah. see us all as a spark of the divine. Uh, you know, whatever your belief is, whether you believe in God, the goddess, the divine, the universe, it's just you know that beautiful that beautiful um, energy. Right in the law of one, they would say there is no separation between creator and creation. So. Therefore, there's no separation between you and others. But um, the interesting thing is we live in a world of, you know, duality in that, well, it's, you have free will, so you can express your uniqueness, your individuality, and that's one of the things that you're supposed to do. But sometimes people take it too far and <laughs> you get separated and, and, you know, we see it today on the news, there's, you know, whatever, there's us and them and they, that country and this country. And it, that's, that's going way too far into the expressing your individuality situation. It's the idea is if you can hold both ideas together in that we're all one, we're, we're all a, a part of the creator, but we've been give, given this unique, unique experience of being able to have individual expression. So here's something even more interesting based on that idea. According to Hindu tradition, God did not create something out of nothing. God became everything. So in the Western culture, we have this kind of big bang idea, especially the Bible too, of, you know, God, you know, said, let there be light and there was light. And so all these thoughts came out of God's head in this, you know, spontaneous big bang experience. In Hindu tradition, God decided, I'm going to become everything. And I think that's closer to what we're experiencing now because once once you realize that the creator is, is everything the creator and the creation are all one and the same that means we're about part of the body of the creator we're a nerve ending in the you know universal brain of the universe we're we're a part of the show we're a part of the body mm -hmm. and um that's that's a much better way and so we keep getting that kind of information in in the healing circles and i i just wanted to present that because to me this this is revelatory this this idea that uh you know god didn't create the world in seven days or whatever god became everything <laughs> and and we're we're part of that that situation so 
What are your perspectives on that, Wendy? My perspective is, as you said, Greg, it's just us learning to express ourselves fully as souls. I feel we're really meant to do a deep dive into who we are and that that's part of how God is exploring and, and learning what God is and what the divine is, is through all of us expressing. Yes. So, and you're right, there's that check in the balance then with, we can't have that infringe on someone else's free will. But there's right. just countless ways to express ourselves without doing that. Right, right. But yes, again, to, you know, I always refer to the law of one, the law of one. So, you know, I, I think uh, Don Elkins asks, you know, what's what's the purpose of life at, at one point? And, and, and they were very happy to tell him. <laughs> he said, basically, your role in life is to help the creator know itself, help the yes. creator know itself. So there we go. More yeah. elegantly put in, in a couple of words. Yes. Right. And it, isn't it interesting that one way to do that is by getting by, you know, knowing yourself through your own self-knowledge and self-awareness, you help the, you know, you, you become awakened or whatever, actualized. And when you do that, that helps the creator know itself too. So pretty, pretty interesting how it's a microcosm. And I love that he was on a mountaintop because I think that's so symbolic of people would have to expend effort to have the privilege to go meet with him and, and speak with him and hear these words of wisdom. And we just naturally raise our vibration and frequency when we're, we've got that good intent, making that effort and we're, we're physically going up. I think that's part of why when I have uh, clients meet their guide uh, during their sessions with me, is I have them visualize taking a walk and going up, going up a hill. Mm -hmm. And at the top of the hill, they meet their guide because the guide <laughs> is lowering their vibration and we're raising our vibration to, to meet part way. So this is just, just perfect. That is, that's so cool. So just uh, one thing about, you know, so that, that there's a, a, a bit of a ship back there in, the, in that last slide about, you know, Western culture, Bert, versus, you know, like, you know, Hindu thought. Um, and, and this is something that the guides have been really concentrating on. They're saying, you know, in Western culture, you, you talk about rights. You, you're, you're, you're all about boundaries. You're all about, you know, you know, you put fences up, you know, good fences make great neighbors. And, you know, the, the guys are saying, is that really true? Um, how about look at the way the Native Americans thought about rights and so forth. They, they didn't believe that you had rights. They believed you had obligations. <laughs> okay. So your obligation was to tend to the earth, tend to and help the earth, tend to and help others, tend to and help yourself. You know, these are your obligations in life. And you don't have to worry about rights when you, if all you do is you keep your nose clean and you, you tend to those obligations, everybody's going to be happy. You're not going to be stepping on anyone else's toes. It, it, this, this, uh, you know, old saying of when you're looking over your neighbor's fence, are you looking to see if they have more than you? Or are you looking to see if they have enough? So the Native Americans would always be looking over the fence to make sure the neighbor has enough, not, oh, you know, am I keeping up with the Joneses mentality, which is, you know, very Western American dream kind of <laughs> thinking. Mm -hmm. So that, that's uh, just such, such a great point and very timely. I had the good fortune to go to an all nations uh, powwow on Saturday. And I just love that that is open to the public and awesome. that you're able to attend that, um, you know, despite, despite the um, history of us having conquered a nation. Yeah. So um, just a, you know, wonderful moment to get there, to be there with it, the singing and the dancing and the celebration. So the, the sign that, that those of you who could see the, the video, that's it's one of those signs that you see on, on a beach or in a park, like no glass, no littering, no alcoholic beverages, no dogs, no, you know, all the things you can't do. And which, you know, that's a very Western society thing. But, you know, the guides are, are thing, saying, don't, don't worry, let's not make a list of what not to do. Let's just make a list of things to do, which are, you know, tend to your obligations. Well, and it's funny too, because it's the welcome to XYZ beach and then the right. long list of what not to do. Right, <laughs> exactly. the word welcome and then it's like, 
canceled out eight different I know. ways. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, big irony there. So here's just a, <clears throat> a couple of uh, lines of bits and tidbits that, that have come through. And um, <clears throat> let me just uh, run through these and Wendy, you and I can talk about them. <clears throat> So one of the bits of channeled information was tend to your own energy and do everything you can to remove blocks and raise it consistently. Meditation and conscious actions are key. Again, that idea of tending to your own garden. <clears throat> Be mindful of people, places, programs that lower your mood and vibrations and emotions. Treat them like an infection that needs to be cleared. So in other words, um, especially when it, they were talking about this in terms of you know, quote unquote programming, the programs you watch on TV or the, um, the social media interactions that you have. If you walk away from an interaction or something you've watched on the TV that has lowered your vibration, that, that has affected your energy field. And it's, it's wise for you to pay attention to it and to try to do something to lift your energy back up and to, and to kind of ward that energy out of you treating it like an infection in a way, not, you know, not to freak you out or to make you fearful because that's not good either. It's the idea is that you have control over this. So if you, if these, if you've been exposed to something like this, it's just, you know, whatever you view as a, an energy sanitizer, <laughs> you know, like a meditation practice, or even just uh, if you watched a, a program on TV that really bothered you, then watch a happy one, watch a comedy, watch a, listen to some good music, that kind of thing. So um, the third one, never miss an opportunity to experience or teach love. This, we've been hearing this over and over. So basically, this idea is in every, inter so they're getting more firm about this. At first, it was just, you know, you're here on the earth to experience and teach love as often as you can. Now the guys are saying, in all of your actions throughout every day, never miss an opportunity to experience love. This is, this is where something shifted. And this was about four weeks ago, where they basically said, they were giving us ideas like, okay, when you're in line at Walgreens, <laughs> you know, don't just stand there and look at the other people as their objects that are in your way. You know, look at the woman next to you. Is she wearing a dress that looks nice? Tell her, you know, S step out of your old self and say nice things to, to, to people, be kind whenever you can think of it, you know, not don't wear yourself out doing this, but whenever there's the opportunity, that's the point, the opportunity, do it. Because once you do that, you're activating somebody, right? So if you tell a woman, oh, you, you know, your dress looks really great on you today. And, you know, I hope you have a great day, you know, not in a weird, creepy way. <laughs> like, you know, it's different if a man says, hey, nice dress, but you, you know what I'm saying? You, you look great or, you know, a kid, you know, hey, you know, that you look like you're having fun today, whatever. If you turn these people on and they go away, that, that can make their entire day, first of all. But second of all, they're going to change the way unwittingly, the way that they're vibe, you know, they're vibing, the, the way that they're acting. And you're going to create this this chain reaction. That's basically what they're saying. So know that your kind words or acts are activating others to do the same. You will begin to receive and notice more kindness coming back to you in your life. And this just happened to me recently. This just happened like two days ago. So I'm now, I'm like, you know, I'm a devotee to this. <laughs> so everywhere I'm going out in public now, I'm trying to make eye contact with everyone. I'm trying to smile. And if there's a conversation that comes out of it, it's just, I'm trying to make it meaningful. And um, the other day it happened in a grocery store where I, um, I saw something I wanted and I had to walk behind like the, the counter where the workers are <laughs> to get to it. Um, and, you know, the woman there was like, wait a minute, what are you doing? And I said, oh, no, I, I'm just getting this. I, and I came back and she, she didn't speak English well, but she said something so sweet to me. She said, oh, that's OK. I thought I was going to I'd be lucky enough to work with you for the rest of the day. She, you know, because I went behind oh. the counter. So I was like, ah, oh. you know, I thought here, I thought she was going to yell at me for, you know, crossing the line, but she was like, no, I thought I was going to get to work with you today. So that was really cute. So that's the kind of thing. That's what, so that made my day, you know, the rest of the day I was like, why? So, and then I thought, you know what? I'm going to talk about this as much as possible. Because how many times have you been in a situation where, 
you know, somebody flipped you off in traffic or cut you off. And then you went home and you told your significant other, or your family member about it. And look at what you did there. You amplified that crappy situation. So I'm amplifying this thing that just happened two days ago. Because how cute, how sweet. Um, so this, these are the things that we can do. They sound like minuscule things, don't they? They don't sound like much. So that's the good news. It doesn't take much. But look at what happens. This is how, and this is what the guides like made me have this vision of these little sparks going all around the world. Of If we all do this all the time, this is how the revolution of love begins. This is, we will create the age of Aquarius, heaven on earth, the world we are striving for. All we have to do is this every day, okay? I'm gonna say it one more time. <laughs> if we are kind to everyone every day, it's gonna change the world. And we don't have to go around. This will not happen by large actions from large groups of people or authorities. You know, this revolution of love isn't gonna happen that way. We should, we don't have to wait for saviors or governments or political parties or whatever to do the right thing. It's our responsibility. It's an inside yeah. job. Yeah, it's an inside job. So, you know, you didn't come to this life to be a spectator. You, this is a, you know, this is a full contact sport. <laughs> it's a participatory situation. So what can you do? Good news is it's not much. It doesn't take much effort, but it does take mindfulness and conscious effort. And it does take discipline not to slide into old behaviors that are, you know, mean and, and, and defensive or whatever. Okay. So, you know, it's not your role to defend yourself. If somebody does, you know, honk at you or give you the bird, you know, while you're driving, don't respond that way. In fact, you know, some people would say, is there any humor you can give to that situation? Like, oh, yep. I, I was the jerk. Sorry. You know, you're right. You, you were right to flip me off or <laughs> make a joke out of it to somebody if they can hear you. I don't know. That's just an example, but Whatever you can do to diffuse a situation like that, so that extremely negative situation that you might have gone home to talk to your, you know, one of your friends about and, and, and run that person down and then, you know, your energy's low and everything, change it around and then come back and talk about how great or how funny or what, how that ended up being a, a positive situation. So, there's one last thing about this that, um, again, this, this came through last week, and this is what kind of blew me away because it had a mingling of ideas about this song. Um, so it's, we're here on earth to, so, so there's a meditation I, I want to talk about. Um, and if we, well, I don't know if we'll have time to do it. I'll, I'll, I'll at least step through it and we can, um, I'm going to create a video and I'll share it with um, everyone separately. It's a 10 minute video. I've talked about it before. It's called the God Spark uh, Meditation. So the idea is you focus on an area inside your heart, your heart chakra, very inside your body. So it's not on the front of you. It's like in, like where your spine is, like the back, you know, where your heart is. And you focus on this area and you start to feel like this love build up, you know, like, again, like the song. And what's happening is creator energy, you know, love, divine love is starting to come through you. It's coming from the creator. So this is like, you're not looking for anything externally to come and enhance your, your energy. This is coming from inside you. So it's the creator energy moving out and, you know, clears things out. It heals you. It makes you euphoric. But one of the things that it, so I, I knew about that, right? So we've been talking about that meditation for a little bit of time now. I've been, uh, prescribing it to people. I've been helping people do it and people are having, you know, amazing reactions from it. It's really great. One detail that was added just a couple of weeks ago was, and we've been, so, you know, we build up a big ball of it, you know, goes out of us and goes outwards. And I thought, why don't we just send this everywhere? Send it to all, all over the world, all over, all over the universe, even other dimensions, you know, why not? Well, what's it going to do? It's going to, it's the irresistible force of love. It's going to change things for the better. Then the information we got was, that's great, because that's creator energy. There's nothing more powerful. But what you're here to do is to mix it with your energy. You're here to put your stink on it. <laughs> In other words, I'm joking, but you're here to add your uniqueness to it, right? So the 
pure energy of the creator mixed with your own uniqueness and then have that go out. And that is the healing combination. That is what's going to change things for us here on earth. And I, I don't, I've never heard of that before. Um, it sounds very unique. It feels right. You know, that's how I know these things. Um, but there's probably a lot of truth to it. So that's, um, yeah, Wendy, I'd lo love to hear what you have to say about that crazy stuff. Well, I think you're talking about a mindset, Greg, and just habits that are uplifting because I've been thinking the last few weeks in particular about how fortunate I am and just really blessed in a lot of ways. And that really is a mindset. So I've been looking for, okay, what are some ways that I can help more? And I just had a really fun moment. It was last week um, on Monday and I was out putting on my mom's recycling and garbage out for her and the UPS truck happened to pull in and drop a package off at her house. I'm like right standing next to the UPS guy and I can see the guy getting out. He's really heavy set. He's just sweating. It's a hot day. Hey, we, we melt easily in Seattle. It was like 82 <laughs> degrees. And I just looked at him and I said, can I go get you a cold water? And he's like, oh my gosh, yes. So I just ran inside and got him a a bottle of water out of the fridge and gave it to him but just like to see his face he was like oh my gosh that made my day nice. and it was just the simplest little thing but when we do things like that for one another I think it really changes the vibration and frequency of how we're all connecting exactly yeah that's exactly it and when we all do this it it we all get better you know, we all, so it's one thing to do it for somebody, you know, cause that's how I was kind of looking at it. Like I want to make, I want to lift these people up. Just, I just want to help them. But then it comes back to you, which is amazing, you know? So you get something back out of it. And then we all rise together and we all feel great. The world loosens up, it gets softer. It becomes the place that where we have always wanted to live, right? All, all boats rise with the tide. And yes. it just brings that expression to mind. Yes, exactly. So um, hmm, we got about a few minutes, but well, this is the God Spark meditation. I'm going to, because Wendy, you've got some slides too. So th these are all the slides I put together. I'll, I'll try to create a video uh, where it's, it's a, you know, how to, how to do this, you know, but um, on my website, actually, there is a blog about this. So if you go to gregkirk.com and click on the blog link, it might even be on my homepage right now too. Just look for God Spark Meditation. You'll be, you'll see it. It's, it's highly recommended. And then um, as you're doing it, as you feel the energy passing, building the love, building, you know, and send it outwards, and uh, it's going to help everything. It's going to make you feel better, and it's going to make other people feel better too. Absolutely. So, and let's just look at this as an invitation, and it's something we can return to, Greg, because I have a feeling that this has a, a part two um, to it and we'll continue this. So let's, let's do that next time. I'd love to remind everyone the Lionsgate portal is coming up on August 8th. And that is an annual heart chakra opening. And it's an opportunity to be the revolution of love um, as, we're, as we're discussing today. So look for our... Uh, Lionsgate portal. It was on August 8th uh, last year that we did that on Waking Up Spiritually. So you'll see the link here and just go through and click on that broadcast link and you will find it there. Awesome. Um, and just enjoy that and just really feel, feel that energy. And when your heart opens, that relieves and releases anxiety um, because feeling that love and that heart opening, that's the antidote to fear and anxiety. So, and that is an epidemic in our society. So check out, um, check out that, that episode. And also um, what you've been talking about, Greg, it takes me back to some of our very first episodes we did. And if listeners would like to go to page one, there were two episodes on energy management. And I just think those are so helpful and so key. So look for those on the broadcast tab at wakingupspiritually.com. Thank you. And I'd like everyone to think about when do you feel the most loved? When do you feel the most loving? 
And do you know how to give love to yourself? And do you know how to rise in love versus to fall in love? Because that's such a prevalent expression in our society is, oh my goodness, I feel like I'm falling in love with so-and-so or with a certain, it doesn't have to be with a person, can also be with a technique or with an activity. Well, why are we falling? <laughs> just like, right. that just that just feels like the wrong direction to me. <laughs> it feels like, you know, that then over time, you know, so quickly denigrates into bringing out the worst in each other versus how do we lift each other up and how do we how do we rise in love? Uh, and this this beautiful bride is my my oldest daughter Tara. So those of you who are able to see, um, this was her wedding day just about um, two years ago. And eyes. <clears throat> oh, thank you. And the question that's been coming up is I've been working with my guides asking how can I serve more? How can I serve better? How can I serve differently? Because I've just been so fortunate to receive so many heart healings and so many different types of healings over the last few months and, and years. And what's interesting, even though I'm technically um, a past life regressionist, um, energy healer, as well as a certified uh, spiritual teacher and Reiki master, what comes up a lot of times in sessions, and Greg, I know this comes up in your sessions too, having um, had some of your amazing healing sessions, is it's a lot of inner child things come up as well as shadow self, um, just that part of us that we don't like. Uh, that's how I would describe the shadow um, the, most, uh, the most directly. And it's just those things that cause just shame and just you know, cause us to feel embarrassed and, and incompetent and just all those not confident, all those types of energy. So what's really coming up in addition to my working with people to have the privilege of helping them heal and uplift their past life energy, as well as to bring forth their forgotten abilities. Because as the saying now goes, the mystery school teachings, they're no longer a mystery. We're meant to be really uh, bringing those out and sharing them. So I've completely redone my service offerings to come uh, more from that place of, of just rising together. And so please visit my website. I've now got two options. So very simple, very straightforward. One is a signature healing three session package where we start with a two and a half hour past life regression and then do two one hour healings. Of course, it's all the higher self and guides that are really uh, bringing, this, bringing this forth for people. It's very specific and custom to that person. And in the first session, we go to a crystal cave and I then build a physical uh, crystal grid for people. And that then pulls the thread um, between the three sessions in a really powerful way. And I'm also thrilled to announce, I am just in the process of rolling out for the first time, a 12 month past life mastery program that will be available to only five students. So we'll be working together both individually and very closely as a group of six people. And you will not be the same person um, at the end of that year. I know that you will not uh, recognize yourself. And what's so interesting is this is the program that I didn't realize I've spent the last 11 or 12 years creating and the guides have just, just told me what it is. So I'm very, very excited to um, have that be announced. And, You'll see, you'll see it on my website and coming soon. Um, I've got one or two, possibly three people. So just two more and we'll be starting. So thank you for letting me share that. Yeah. And I would love to invite people to uh, a Q&A with author uh, Robert Snow, Bob Snow, who wrote Portrait of a Past Life Skeptic that I've mentioned before. And it is one of my favorite first person accounts uh, because Bob Snow was a homicide um, police captain and thought uh, past lives and reincarnation were hooey. So it's just great to hear him tell the story of what actually happened as he discovered and proved his own past life as this obscure uh, portrait painter who had lived in New York City, hence the perfect title, Portrait of a Past Life Skeptic. So please uh, join me uh, with Bob Snow 
Thursday, July 28th, 4 to uh, 5.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, looks like I've got a typo there. It's 4 to 5.30. And just go to my website at wendyrosewilliams.com and I will send you the link. And you're so welcome to uh, read the book before if you can and you'll get to ask Bob some specific questions and we'll make it a real book club as well as listen to him give this uh, wonderful uh, conversation and talk. And this all happened in pre-internet days. So the research he had to do was quite the deep dive and it's fascinating to hear. And I know it will inspire people and help them think about, oh gosh, how could I more deeply uh, delve into my past lives? How could I you know, look at, do these maybe exist in the historical records or could I maybe learn more about who I've been? Which takes us right back to that point of the divine love and learning that, that self-expression as a spark of the divine. Right, exciting. So please uh, join us on August 15th for our next Waking Up Spiritually podcast. And you can join us in Facebook at our Waking Up Spiritually group, um, as well as go to our website, wakingupspiritually.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we so appreciate you rating and reviewing us on Apple iTunes. Um, that helps other people find um, find uh, this conversation and join us in this conversation. We love to hear your suggestions for topics, so please share those with us. And visit Greg at his website, some great stuff there, uh, at gregkirk.com, and Greg is spelled G-R-E-G-G, -G, Kirk, K-I-R-K.com, and I'm at wendyrosewilliams.com, and you can request your complimentary 15-minute phone appointment uh, today and be in touch with me. So thank you, everyone. So appreciate you being here. Yes, hold on one second. I just wanna see if we have any um, questions or any responses today before we leave. Perfect, because we do also podcast live in the Waking Up Spiritually group. So that's what Greg is checking right now for those of you who are listening uh, at a later <laughs> date. No, just, just some positive things of great to see us live and uh, that kind of thing. Uh, no questions. <laughs> so Okay, wonderful. Uh, all, right. all right, everyone. Thank you. And we'll see you all um, on August 15th. August 15th. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.